and a really warm welcome to Urban Flower Collective. Welcome back if you've been here before. If this is your first time, then thanks for popping in. My name's Lisa, I'm your host here. Now today I'm gonna to be posting a video that's a really old video. It's the one of the, it, in fact, it is the first um, online tutorial I ever did, and it's the beautiful tea rose. Now this is really set for beginners because it goes really in depth um, into techniques and how to make a lovely tea rose. So um, I've tried to cut it as short as I can for YouTube. If you want a full list of um, equipment and step-by-step -step downloadable PDF, then click on the show notes and there's a link in the show notes for that. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'd love to see your roses that you make. So please remember to tag me in at hashtag Urban Flower Collective. If you need help or you're struggling or you need any support with your sugar flowers, then please come and join us at our free Facebook group, Urban Flower Collective, and you can ask any questions on there. Um, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll be first to see all the new material and there's lots coming out um, towards the end of this year. So I've already rolled out my paste just so you're not having to watch me. So I've mixed the paste pink and then I've rolled it out. Now you can use a normal rolling pin and get it as fine as you like but what I like to do is use a pasta machine. Now I've had a pasta machine lurking in my cupboard for 20 years and didn't use it until a few years ago when I started making sugar flowers and I got it out again. And it's been an absolute godsend. It rolls the flower paste super, super fine and it makes for a really nice, delicate flower. So if you've got a, a, a pasta machine lurking in, your, in the back of a cupboard like I did, get it out because now it's going to come into its own. I think I made pasta once or twice with it and that was it. It was lurking in the back of the cupboard. You can get electric pasta machines that um, plug in, uh, pasta rollers, or you can get them to fit on your KitchenAid or on your Kenwood as well. So it's entirely up to you, but that manual one is pretty cheap and it, it really comes into its own. So I've rolled out my paste on level nine on the pasta machine, which is the thinnest. And the more thin and delicate your flowers are on a rose, the more delicate and more professional it will look and the more realistic it will look. Something to keep our petals in while we're, while we're cutting them. And just a polystyrene document, all it will do. So what I've done here is just cut down the sides and cut along the edge and it opens up in a flap. Now as I cut out these petals, I shall put them into the, the wallet, close the wallet over and it keeps them nice and moist until we're ready to use them. Um, you can also get Wilton ones. This one is a Wilton one. These are available on Amazon. This has got two flaps here. And again, it just does the same. So you can see I've rolled out my, um, my my flower paste really really fine you can see my hand through it there and if I put it on the cutting mat here you can see the squares through the cutting mat so it's it's really really fine so that's going to look really nice when we start to make our flower so I'm going to take my first petal cutter which is the smallest size and I'm going to cut out 11 petals I thought you didn't need to see me cutting all of these out. I'm just going to do two of each and I've cut the rest out earlier. So that's two of the small size. So we're going to need 11 of those. So 11 of the, the small size. This will all be in your PDF so you can look back at this. We're going to go on to the second size um, and we're going to need 10 of these. Pop your paste over your cutter and give it a roll over the top. And maybe just run around with your finger and just to get that really good cut. So if it's not cutting out very well on your mat, that's another way to get a good cut. So we're onto the third size now and we're just gonna need seven of those. So seven of that third size. Onto our fourth and our largest petal, we're going to need eight of those. So to make our centre, we're going to take our polystyrene ball and we're going to take our 20 gauge florist wire. And what we're going to do is just insert this straight through the middle of the ball horizontally. So you can see I'm just pushing it through and it goes through pretty easily. 
Now, if you're just making short stemmed rows, you probably could cut this off here and that's where your wire cutters would come in. You could cut that off. Because my flower arrangement's got quite long stems, I'm gonna keep it all and I'm just gonna use the whole length of the wire. And then I can always trim it off later if it's too long. So to make this centre, we need this to be really firm so the flower doesn't wobble about on your cake. So what I'm gonna do is just fold that over the top and fold this side over the top as well. And then I'm gonna just twist. So you can see I'm just twisting the two wires together until that feels really pretty firm. And then I'll just twist all the way down to the bottom of the stem. Now, if this doesn't feel really solid here, take your needle and nose pliers and just give it a little bit more of a twist, just to make sure. What you don't want is this to be flopping around and your flower to flop around. You can still shape it when it's on the cake, you know, you can still shape this wire, it's not too firm to, um, to not be able to shape, but you just don't want the flower to be wobbling around when it's on the cake, um, and it, particularly if you're going to transport it to a wedding or to a celebration. So that's nice and firm on there. Um, next, I'm going to take about the same size of my spare sugar paste, um, so about the same size ball. And actually, for this whole flour, you probably only need about 40 grams of flour paste. Um, so it's, you don't need that much because you're, you're rolling it out super fine. I'm going to put the rest away. Um, so I'm going to take this smallish ball, roll it into a ball, and then I'm just going to pinch the end, if you can see, maybe show you on this camera, just pinch the end a bit to make sort of a comb shape. Then I'm going to take a medium ball tool and just make a, a dent in the middle. So we've got a, a bit of a comb shape there and it's got a hole in it. Now I'm going to take the, um, the ball the other thing I forgot to tell you is we're going to need some kind of edible glue. So I like to use egg white. I think egg white's very versatile. I've always got it in the kitchen. So I've just got a little pot of egg white here. Obviously, if you're vegan, then use edible glue or, um, or you can use pipe and gel, you know, whatever suits you. But I just find that this is easy to use and, you know, I've always got egg in the kitchen. So I've always got some handy. Um, so I'm just, all I'm going to do is put some egg white on the top of this ball, you can see here. And then I'm going to take the cone and I'm just going to manipulate it down onto the ball. Now it doesn't matter that it hasn't gone all the way down because our petals will cover that part of the um, polystyrene ball. So you can see I've just pulled that down as far as it will go. And I've got a nice little cone here. So I'll show you on this camera. So it looks a bit like a pixie hat um, on the on the ball. Now I'll, I like to use a bottle. I've got a gin bottle here. I'm just going to pop this in the gin bottle until we're ready to use it again. You can pop it in a polystyrene um, ball. You can pop it in a, a a cake dummy, whatever you want, but I've just got a bottle there just to hang on to mine. So that's that part done. Now we're going to move on to our petals. So you can do that up in advance if you want. You can make a few of these in advance if you're making an array of sugar flowers. Um, I like to be as efficient as I can and try and do everything in stages. So next thing we're going to try and um, sort out our petals. So the first row of petals are going to be the smallest. And we're going to take six out at a time. So we're going to take six out and then five out. If you remember, we've got 11 of these petals. So this petal pad is just, this one's got holes in. I'm just using this because it's blue and you can see the petals a bit better. It doesn't need to have holes in for this flower. Um, it's quite useful to have one like this though because some of the other flowers that we will be doing will need a petal pad with holes in. So I've got six out here. What we're going to do, if you've never um, softened up petals before, is we're going to take a ball tool, and most of you will have a ball tool in your, um, in your toolkit. I'm sure you've got a few. So this is just a medium-sized ball tool. It's not the smallest, it's not the largest. 
And all I'm going to do is run around the edges of these flowers just so they don't look freshly cut. Just going to soften up those edges and make them as thin again as possible. Now this isn't a frilly flower, um, so it doesn't need to be frilled. So if you can see what I'm doing is I'm half on the petal pad and half on the edge of the, the flower paste and I'm just rolling around and it just thins out the edge nicely and gives it just a gentle little curve. So I'm doing that for all six. Next, I'm going to take the veiner. Now, as I say, you can have any kind of veiner. This is um, a David Austin Rose veiner, but anything with a subtle vein on it. And I'm going to pop this in and I'm going to press on it and my petals are nicely veined. Now, this does make a difference. You probably think, why am I bothering with these middle petals? Because you're not going to see them. But if someone looks close up at your flower, then you know they're going to see that the, the petals have all been veined and it just makes it look a lot more professional and makes it look really nice. Um, so yeah, I mean if you really really wanted to miss out this middle, um, this very middle, you know the smallest petals you could do but actually it only takes a couple of minutes and to give it that nicer look I think it's well worth it. So that's six done. Now Obviously, most of the petals are going to go up this way and around the flower. But the first one, I'm going to just pop sideways on. Okay, so I don't want to get egg white on the petal part. I don't want to make it sticky. Um, but I'm just going to cover the whole of this first petal in egg white. If you can see, I'm just going to wrap it around the top of the comb, like so, and let it overlap. So can you see I've just made a point there with that. I shall show you on the other camera. So just made more of a centre fold in there. Now for the next five, because there's six on this first row, I'm going to take all five of them just to be efficient and you know you'll get into a system of doing this and you'll get a, a production line going and you'll be really quick at it so we're going to take our egg white and i'm going to go about two thirds of the way down the right hand side and about a third of the way down the left on each petal with this glue or egg white, whatever you use, an edible glue, pipe and gel, egg white. So two thirds down the right and one third down the left. Two thirds down the right and one third down the left. And this is just to give us a nice overlap on our petals. So taking the first one and taking it to the same height as your centre, stick down that right hand side but leave your left hand side flapping open take your second petal and stick it underneath the flap of the first one so we're going to go underneath that left hand side stick down the right hand side to the comb so you can see i've left them open oops that one's fallen off and we're going to do that all the way around so I'll show you on this camera. So we're going to stick down the right underneath the flap of the previous one. Stick down the right underneath the flap of the previous one. And our fifth one, finally, stick down the right hand side under the flap. So you should be looking at something like this, which is quite flappy. Now what we're going to do is just pull this as tight as we can. So we're going to pull the left hand sides over. You may need a little bit more glue at this stage. If it's not sticking very well because we haven't put the glue all the way up to the top. But just be mindful that wherever you put glue, um, the flower dust doesn't always stick well. So if you're going to dust the inside of your petal, petals, then you might not want to put too much edible glue or um, egg white on. 
So that's our very first row done. I'll just show you on the other camera. You can see that's starting to look like the centre of a rose now. So now we're going to move on to our second layer and it's, again it's the smallest petal size. So we're going to take the five that we haven't um, worked on yet. So I've got two there. Two, three, four, five. I'm going to take our rosebud again, and I mean, if there's a little flap open here. Um, and you can fit under, then do, by all means, do that. Um, otherwise, just start on a gap. And we're going to pop these at the same height. So we're not going any higher or lower with this row. We're just going to pop them at the same height, stick down that right-hand side, and pop the left-hand side underneath. So I think I can show you better on this one. Stick it down and stick the right-hand side down, leave the left-hand side open. So you can stick the next petal under it. So stick that right side down and space them out just so they're nicely spaced out. So again, you can see they're all flapped open. So now I'm just gonna pull them round again and stick that left-hand side down. So that's starting to look nice. It's starting to look like the center of a rosebud. So that's our two center rows with our smallest petal so we're going to move on to our second size now so i'm just going to pop that and my bottle out of the way so onto the next size and again there's 10 of these if you remember so we're going to work on five at a time again two three four five So again, we've got five here, and again, I'm going to ask you to do exactly the same. So just two thirds up on the right and a third on the left with your glue. I'm going to take our bud again. This time, we're just going to put the petals slightly higher than we did last time. So find a little gap, um, find where the, the petals cross over, and take your first one. And if you can see, it's just slightly higher. So sticking down the right hand side again and leaving that left side flapped open. So again, just keep all five of your next petals at that same level. So just slightly higher than the first row. So stick down your right hand side, leave your left hand side open. If your hands get a little bit sticky from the glue or from the sugar paste, you can always just give them a little dab with your cornflour um, and that should help. So four and five. So we've got five on there. So you can see that's a slightly higher and all I'm going to do is pull these round and stick them again. Now this row doesn't need to be quite so tight. It can be a little bit more um, relaxed. We, need, we want to start to see some air coming into this flower to make it look like it's just starting to bloom. Um, so you don't really want that this second size petal quite as tight as the first size. So I'm just pulling it round. And you can see it's starting to look really nice like a rosebud. Now you could leave this size petal at like this or you can move on to put another row of it on. I like to put another row on. I like them to look big and blousy, the flowers. And, you know, I just think it looks really nice with more petals on. Um, at this stage, this could be your rosebud. So you can see the bottom of the, um, the, the ball isn't covered, but if we put a green calyx on there, that would cover the bottom of the ball. And that's the stage you might stop for your rosebud or maybe after the next row. So, if you want to make a rosebud, stop at this stage. Um, but anyway, we're going to continue. I'm going to put the next five on. Um, so this is still our second size petal and there's five left of these. Uh, 
And again, we're going to take our um, bud and if you want, you can go slightly higher again with this row. So I think I'm going to go just slightly higher again. So stick down your right and pop the second petal under the flap that you've left open of the left, just to get that nice feel of some movement in the flower. Just going to stick those down. Don't worry that the bottom of the cone isn't covered because that will get covered with the larger petals soon. So again, you can see we've left those flaps open. So now I'm just going to go around and close them off again and stick those petals down at the left hand side. So we're starting to get a nice rosy look now. Um, which is great. So that's our second size petal. Now the third size petal, we're going to do something a little bit different. We want the, the flower to look like it's starting to bloom. So we'll do just something a little different. Now, if you remember, there's only seven of these flowers, uh, of these petals. So we're going to take three, first of all, do exactly the same with our ball tool. We're going to ball around the edges just to get rid of that cut look and to make them as fine as we can. So that's three. Next, we're going to fold them in half. So we're just going to fold them in half. And again, we're going to take our vena. Vein them. If your crease is gone when you've veined them, if you've veined them quite firmly, I think I have, I'm just going to give them another little crease here. So fold them over, fold them over, fold them over. Now at this point, you can bring in your mat again. Or you can just do it on the on the pad if you want. But we're going to need a skewer at this point as well. I'm trying to keep things simple and keep tools that you will have in your kitchen. So a skewer, a cocktail stick will do. You can get a proper tool called a cell pin that will do the same job. But you know, if I use a barbecue skewer or a cocktail stick to do this, and it works just as well. So what we're going to do is just unfold them. And having the front and the, the ridge to the back, I'm just going to turn back, if you can see, just roll back these edges a little bit. So they're just rolled back and it just looks like the, the flower's just starting to bloom. So I'm going to do the same here. So open it up. You've got your ridge to the back, your crease to the front. And we're just going to roll back these petals. So just roll them back. Now, depending on the paste you use, it might be starting to dry out a little bit now, or it might still be sticky like this one. Um, but it should hold its shape. So you can do just one side if you want. You can do both sides. It depends on how much you want the flower to look like it's opening up. So that's those. And again, because we're starting to get a bit more shape to our bud and it's starting to bulge out a little bit more, I'm going to flip it over and put it in my hand. So I've got the ridge to the front now and I'm just going to ball tool it a little bit there just to give it a little bit of a curve. So I'm going to pop that down. I'm going to do the same, flip it over and just rub the ball tool into the palm of my hand a little bit just to give it a bit of shape. Last one, flip it over. So we've only got three on this row. Ball to it and they're ready to go. Now for this one, I'm going to get you to do the glue about halfway down and all the way across. Just so it sticks nicely. All halfway down and all the way across that point. So down and all the way across. So you can see I've just glued probably the bottom third of the whole petal. 
So we're going to take our bud again. And this time, we want them to be about the same height. So no lower, no higher. And um, we're just going to stick these three down. But as we stick it down, I'm just going to nip it a little bit and you'll see it just opens up the bud a little bit. So I've just nipped the back and it just opens it up to make it look like there's a little bit of air in between this row and the last one. Now, these don't need to overlap because we're only putting three on and they need to be spaced out um, to cover the whole flower. So stick the next one on at the same height and do the same again. Just give it a nip and it will open up nicely. Last one. So these should just fit nicely around your flower. Just press the bottoms down, make sure they're well stuck. You can see that looks nice and airy. So it looks like there's a little bit of air coming into the um, flower and the, the petals are starting to bloom. So I'll just pop that on one side. So we've got four more of that shape. So we'll do exactly the same thing again. So these are our final four of our um, third size, three, four. So we've got four this time. Take our bud and stick them again at the same height. So we're just going to stick it on and we're going to give it a little nip just to open it up a little bit. So again, we're going to stick it on and just at the bottom, just give it a tiny nip and it just opens it up. So there's a bit more air in between the layers. You can see that's starting to look really nice. It's starting to look like a proper tea rose, isn't it? Um, so I'm just going to leave that to dry off a little bit. Obviously with that four three, you can overlap your petals a little bit. Um, it, there, there are more petals than the previous row where we just had to sort of space them out. But that's starting to look really nice and it's starting to open up. Now, if, if you feel your petals are still a bit floppy and you don't want that open look, if you want more of a closed rose, then at this stage, I would suggest you hang it upside down and let it dry for a little bit. Um, so you can just hang it on a hook, hang it on a um, whatever you've got. You can even hang it inside your oven on a very, very low heat, maybe 50 degrees or heat your oven to 50 degrees then turn it off and let it hang on the shelf of your oven um, and that will dry it off um, a bit more quickly for you if you're in a rush. So if you feel the leaves are floppy, I'm, I fancy the floppy look for this flower so I'm going to leave it upright um, but if you don't like that floppy look then turn it upside down at this stage and just let it dry. Maybe have a break before you do your final row of um, petals. And again, you can, there's eight of these. You can just leave it at one row or two or see how many you want to add um, to give that big blousy feel or you can make it a little bit more compact if you want. Now, these petals I have prepared a little bit earlier just because they need to dry out for five minutes or so before you add them onto the flower. So I'm just going to show you that we do exactly the same. We bane them, we ball tool them, we'll put a fold in them so I've got to the stage now where I've got a fold in them. So I've veined these, I've ball tooled them, I've folded them over, and now I'm gonna roll back the sides. Now with these, you can go as wild as you want because these are 
the big open flowers at the end, the big petals that look like they're almost fallen off and they do fall off. These are the ones that fall off your flower first. So you can roll these back as much as you like. We're going to do the same thing again with our ball tool and we're just going to ball the middle of them just to give them a little bit of shape. But this time, because we don't want them too floppy and they're going to go on the very outside of the um, of the bud, I'm going to let them dry but over some spoons. Now you can use any spoon for this, you can use a dessert spoon, um, you know, any spoons that you've got in your drawer. So just, I've just shaped it into the spoon so it'll dry in more of a petal kind of shape. And I'm just, I'm just leaving these edges sort of flopping over the side so they'll dry off a little bit. Now I've just got some plastic spoons, these are just plastic dessert spoons and I've chopped the ends off and these are just easy to store in a drawer for me rather than using my kitchen spoons all the time. Um, so now we've got those drying, um, we'll need to leave them about five minutes or so just to firm up a little bit. We don't want them really super firm otherwise we won't be able to manipulate them onto the, the bud but we want them to hold the shape a little bit because they're going to fall back over um, looking like they're opening up. So let's take the first three, I think, or maybe four. I'll take the first four that have been dry. So you can see they're ready to use. They're just, they're just holding the shape a little bit. You know, they're not solid, um, but if you look on my hand, they are kind of holding that dip shape. So I'm going to use these now and these have been sat there just for a few minutes maybe five minutes maybe halfway down or a third of the way down i'm going to put my glue or my egg white so just to the point and about halfway up and this is going to hold it nicely onto your bed so taking our flower which is looking pretty nice now we're going to look for gaps and this time we're going to go right underneath so right to where the wire is and stick it there and again we're going to nip it just to get that airy look so you can see it's stuck right to the bottom and we've got that kind of airy look so we're going to just go around our flower and put these four larger size petals on and go right underneath so they're a little bit lower than the last layer and I'll probably haven't left these long enough but you know don't worry we've stuck those on if they do start to flop we can hang it upside down to dry so it might be that you want a smaller rose and you want to leave it just like that um, or we can continue and I'm going to continue because I've cut the petals out now um, and I want to add them on. So I'm going to leave this just hanging upside down. I'm going to take my flower again and I mean if it is very floppy you can always put these on just from the bottom and, and do them and do it upside down. So I'm going to go into the gaps where there were gaps where, um, where the petals overlapped I'm going to stick those on. So as mine is floppy, I am going to do it upside down. But obviously, if you've let yours set up a little bit longer, if you've got a bit more time than I have here today, um, then you can put yours on the right way up. But I can just, I can see where the gaps are. So I can see that that looks really symmetrical. It looks like a really nice flower. So I'm just going to hang it upside down for maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes just to let those last petals set up and then I'll come back and show you how to dust it up and put the calyx on. So while our flower's drying I thought I would just show you how to make the calyx and um, we can start to dust up our flower. So I've got some holly green ultra fine here, just need a tiny little bit, don't need much at all. Um, so I'm just making this nice and pliable, I'm going to just roll it out. Um, it doesn't need to be quite as fine as the petals because these do tend to snap off, um, particularly if they're going on a cake, often when you're trying to put them into the cake they will snap. 
Um, so, you know, still probably about a millimetre thickness. Like that. I'm just taking a, a, a star kind of shape cutter. It's from a little cookie cutter set. And I'm just going to give that a good cut, make sure it's all cut nicely. And I'm going to take the petal pad. This is actually when one of these petal pads with holes in does come in handy when you're adding a calyx. And all I'm going to do is just, I'm going to fatten these leaves out a little bit, you can see, um, and just make them look a bit finer again. So, yeah, I'm just going to. Do that and fatten it out and make it just a little bit longer so it's got a bit more impact on the back of the cake. Then I think what I'll do is just pull the ball tool down a little bit just to give them a little bit of a curl. You can see that's just curled it up a bit because when you look at a, a calyx on a flower, it's often peeling away a little bit from the flower. So we'll just give it a little bit of movement with this ball tool. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just dust this up a little bit. So I'm going to just take some kitchen roll because it does get a little bit messy. Um, take a sheet of kitchen roll. I'm going to fold it in half and just pop this on so you can see. And I use a, um, a painter's palette just to put my colours in, but you can just you can just use the kitchen roll if you want. I mean, we're not really going to be using much at all here. So I'm just going to take some brushes. Now, the brushes I like to use for dusting or makeup brushes, I think they're really soft. Um, and you can get some really nice ones fairly cheaply on Amazon. You just keep them for, for your petal dust, obviously. Um, but yeah, you can get some nice fluffy ones. And then you can get more... Um, ones that maybe you do eyeliner and, and eyeshadow with, and they're a bit more, um, you can get more movement with those and you can be a bit more directional with those. So I've got my nice big pink fluffy ones and then I've got these little more kind of precise ones. So they're my makeup brushes that I'm gonna use. So the color I'm using here is Moss Green by Sugar Flare. And I'm just gonna pop a bit of this on. So. I'm actually just going to pop it onto the, um, the kitchen roll so you can see. And basically, I'm just going to give it a little dust just to, to make it look a bit more variegated, give it a bit more um, texture. I'm just going to go from the inside out to the edges with this green. Um, and it just makes the sugar paste come alive a bit, really. I'm going to flip it over and do the same on the back. Uh, so. It doesn't look as flat, you know, if you do a little bit of dusting like this. So that's made it look a little bit variegated. Now the next thing I'm going to use is a little bit of yellow, I think. Um, and again, I'm going to use that same brush and I'm just going to pop a tiny bit of yellow on. And I'm just going to do that maybe along some of the edges, maybe a bit too much on there. And you can see it's just giving it that sort of variegated, multi-tonal look. And I'm going to do the same on the back. Just a little bit of yellow here and there. And it just adds a little bit of interest and stops your calyx looking so flat. And then my very favourite colour for a, any leaf is some aubergine. Now this is um, rainbow dust aubergine. And you just need a tiny, tiny bit of this as well. I'm just going to dot that on here. You don't need too much at all. And I'm going to use a more directional brush for this. And I'm just literally going to hit the edges. So if you look, I'm just going to sort of hit the edges with this. Um, and not all of them, just some of them. Not every edge. Just to make it look a bit more organic and a bit more um, 
and trust me. So that is our calyx. Because I've hit the edge, it's on the back there as well. So I'm just going to give it a final little green dust to get rid of any splodges. And I might even just ball tool this again, just to get a bit more shape. So that's our calyx. Now, if you don't have a, um, a petal pad with holes in, don't worry, but because I do, I'm going to pop this on here. All we're going to do is slot the um, stalk of our rose through the middle. Now you can do it in your hand as well. So you could just hold it up and push it through. Because I've got this petal pad, I'm going to use that. So I'm going to take some egg white some, or some edible glue. Just put it in the centre and a little way up each leaf of the calyx and then I'm just going to pop this through the middle like so and hopefully that should stick but you can you can do that equally as well in your hand so you can see we've got our calyx on the back now so that's looking a bit more finished off uh, I'm just going to press it down and some of these should flop because our um, petal paste isn't completely dry. We've just put it on straight away. So that looks quite nice and that, that does finish it off. Next thing we're going to do is take our florist tape and we're going to finish off this stem. So if you haven't used florist tape before, it's not sticky. It feels quite um, just normal, like crepe paper to start with but it's got glue impregnated in there. So you just need to give it a stretch and that will activate the glue. Now, I usually start about an inch down the stem and then work my way up. Now we're just gonna twirl this round and to kind of squeeze the, um, the, the tape onto itself and it sticks, it self sticks. So I've worked all the way up to the top of the stem and now I'm just gonna work my way back down. This is when I wish on the shorter stem but this is all again this is all practice you, you probably feel all fingers and thumbs if this is the first time you've tried to use this um, but it all comes with practice so just make sure that goes all the way down to the bottom of your florist wire looks nice it's starting to look more like a rose now so the last thing we need to do is just dust up our um, our petals. So as I say the inspiration for this one came from a tea rose that was very very pale pink and it just had um, the edges were uh, a darker pink. So I'm going to take this, I'll just pop this in the bottle for now, I'm going to take this dusty pink, dusky pink even, um, from Sugar Flare and I'm going to use some of this. I'm just going to use the same kitchen roll and I'm just going to take a little bit of this out and pop it onto the kitchen roll. Now, I don't want to go overboard with this. I want to make it look the same as the other ones, but this really will sort of bring the flower to life. So if you look, I'm just going to take this fattish brush and just dust in the centre to make that look a bit darker because that's how the flower was that inspired me to do this. And then I'm just going to knock the edge of the brush on the edge of the leaves just to get the edges. Now you don't want too much. You can't take it away once it's on. Um, it's often nice to have a bit of white petal paste, uh, petal dust here as well just to tone it down if you have gone a bit too overboard. Um, but you can see that's starting to look nicer now isn't it it looks like there's a bit more movement a bit more interest to the flower so you might think you know if you're not used to dusting up your flowers then it really does up the game it really does make them look more realistic and it just adds a lot of interest to them now if you can start off with a white flower and dust the whole thing pink if you want 
um, you know, you can get multi-tonal flowers. You can dust the petals before you put them on if you'd like to, and I'll show you that in some other um, flower classes. But for this one, just for the effect we want, I'm just going on the edges um, and just working my way around the cake and making sure I get every edge of every petal. And you can see some of the veins are um, taking up the petal dust as well. So that looks really nice. It's going down some of the, the veins. But, you know, go wild. This is your time to be creative with your flower dust. Just have a practice, have a play around with them and see what kind of effect you like. So I think for this flower, that is absolutely enough. I don't want to go overboard with it. It's meant to be a very pale pink flower. Um, so you can see that looks really quite nice now and it matches the rest. Now, if I want these petals to open up a little bit more, they're still quite pliable, so I can do that. Um, I've kept this one a little more compact compared to the others. So I'm going to bring the cake over um, to show you again. So you can see that this matches nicely. Um, and I don't know where I'm going to put it, but I shall probably put it somewhere down there. And that looks really nice. So that is our tea rolls. I'd love to see what you make. I'd love you to experiment with colours. I'd love you to experiment with um, petal dusts. And I'd love to see your pictures. Thank you.